Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a working Switch UI in Adobe XD. So from the welcome screen, I'm going to select the iPhone preset artboard and it creates our artboard. You can double click the text at the top and give it a name if you like. So the first thing we're going to do is zoom in and create the Switch itself. So if you select the rectangle tool, left click and drag so that you get a rectangle that looks something like this or you can specify the width and height specifically on the right hand side. So I've gone for 60 pixels wide and 40 pixels high. Now what we can do is these smaller circles just inside from the edge, if we click on any of those and drag towards the center, it will round off our corners. And we can see the maximum radius of this shape is 20. Alternatively, you can specify a ridiculously high radius of something like 300 and it will give you the same effect. It will round off the corners as far as they can go. So we have our rounded rectangle. Next, we're going to select this and go to Edit, Duplicate. And with our copy, what we're going to do is take the height, so that's 40, and we're going to enter the same value as the width. So if we type 40 as the width and press Enter, it then gives us a circle or a square with rounded corners, which effectively is a circle anyway. So now let's select the first shape we created, that's the rounded rectangle. And we're going to deselect the border and click on the fill color picker. So this is going to be the active state, so we're going to select a shade of green. So we're using the hue slider on the right, and then we can pick our specific color in this space on the left. Once you're happy, just click anywhere off that screen and it will disappear. And then you can select the circle and using the eyedropper tool, just sample that same green color or whatever color you chose. You can then adjust the border width as you like. So let's type in four, a little bit too thick. Let's go back down to two. And there we go, we've created our active switch. Now what we can also do is select this, go to edit, down to duplicate, and then hold shift and left click and drag down. And we simply then just have to select the circle and drag this over to the other side. And Adobe XD will nicely snap it in place with those smart guides. Now this is going to be the inactive state. So instead of green, let's select this from the color picker and we'll pick a fairly light shade of gray. And we can select the rectangle that's green as well. And again, just use that eyedropper tool just to sample that exact same shade of gray. So we have our active and our inactive button states. That's all looking good. So let's just drag those off to one side. Now we're going to create the UI itself. So let's select the text tool, click anywhere on the artboard, and we're going to type some categories. So we'll type airplane mode as the first one. We've got Helvetica as the font. And let's select from the color picker a different color. Make sure we select that text first. So I'm going to type in 333333 333 as the hex value and press enter. And that's a very, very dark gray. So there we go, we've got our text. And next I'm going to select the line tool, just left click from the left edge of the artboard and hold shift and drag all the way over to the right edge. Now a one pixel border width is absolutely fine, although I'm going to select the border color and make sure this is very light. We want this to be very, very subtle so that it's visible, but so it doesn't detract from any of the other UI elements. And I'm just gonna drag my text over here and just move this line up holding shift. Now I'm going to add some icons over here. You may have your own icons already and that's fine. If you haven't, you can go to File, down to Open UI Kit, and you've got the Apple iOS, Google Material, and Microsoft Windows UI Kits that you can open up and borrow assets from. So let's select Apple iOS. And I'm going to zoom in. 
and we've got these here. So we're creating something similar to this. So if I drag this around, it's all grouped at the moment. Let's just go to Object, Ungroup, and now I can select these icons individually. So if I hold Shift and just select the top three, which are the ones I'm going to be using, I can go to Edit, Copy, and we can then close or minimize that screen and then go back to our file and select edit and paste. So we've got these icons that we can now use in our design as well. And I'm going to move these all the way over to the left edge and then hold shift and use the right arrow key and press it three times. Every time I hold shift and press the right arrow key, I'm moving these icons 10 pixels to the right. So if I go one, two, three, we know that this margin on the left here, this space, is 30 pixels. So let's just move our text over as well. I want to make sure that this text is vertically central within this space. And then we've got our switches over here. I can select both parts of the switch and go to Object and Group, just so we don't accidentally pull them apart by mistake. And I can now move this active state onto the top. Again, make sure it's vertically central. And if I drag the switch to the very right edge of the artboard, I can then hold shift and this time use the left arrow key and go one, two, three. So on the left edge, we've got 30 pixels as that margin and on the right edge, 30 pixels as well. So a nice bit of consistency there. So we've done the first one. Now what I'm going to do is use the repeat grid tool to save a bit of time. Rather than copy and paste the text in the line, which you can do, I'm going to select just the line and the text. That's the bit that's going to be consistent for each of these sections. And just select the repeat grid option. And you'll see these green guides appear and you can just drag down from the bottom. And it repeats that content. And we'll just drag the bottom of the repeat grid group to about here, just so we get that bottom divider in. And then what we can do is just select the repeat grid group again. And if we hover in between the elements, we get these pink spaces. Just click and drag up or down to increase the spacing. So we want to adjust this so the text for each section is in the middle. There we go, that looks good to me. And then we can bring these icons back up and just again position those vertically. In fact, if we position the top and the bottom ones correctly, we can then hold shift, select all three icons, and then from the alignment options on the right, just select the far right one, distribute vertically. And you see it nudges that middle one into the middle. Just so they're all spaced out consistently. Now what we can do is double click on our repeat grid group to go inside it. And again, we can double click on this text to edit this piece of text. So let's type in Wi-Fi. So while the formatting, if I double click on this and change the color, for example, it will adjust the formatting. The text content itself can be different. And we'll type Bluetooth for the last one. And again, we can bring this switch in. Just move it all the way to the right edge of the artboard, hold shift and press the left arrow key three times. And then go to edit, duplicate, and just hold shift and drag down. You see it nicely marks the consistent spacing there. So we've created the UI itself. Now it's time to make these switches work. Now for this tutorial, we're only going to be animating the top switch. So this is purely to demonstrate the functionality of the switch. So let's select this artboard by clicking on the artboard name at the top and just hold Alt and Shift and drag out. Alternatively, you can select the artboard and go to Edit, down to Duplicate, and it will create a copy alongside. So let's change the names of these artboards. We'll call this one Switch Active, and then this one on the right, Switch Inactive. And the only difference between the two is that we're going to grab one of our inactive switches 
and just move it up there. What I did there was left click and drag holding Alt and Shift to create a copy and it snaps nicely on top of the one above. So we have our active state and our inactive state. Next, once we're ready, switch over to prototype mode at the top. And we can now click on our active switch. And when a user clicks this, we can click on the blue arrow here and drag this over to this artboard. Now you get a few different settings. We're going to set the transition as dissolve have the easing as ease out and change the duration to 0.2. Now we don't want this to be an instant transition, but we do want it to be very quick. So we've set those settings and on the inactive one, we just click on the top right switch and use this little blue tab with the arrow here and we'll left click and drag and just drag that back onto this artboard. Again, it remembers the same settings from before so that's perfect. You'll want to keep the settings the same between artboards. Next, once you've done that, you can click play in the top right corner and it will bring up a preview of your app. Let's just move that out of the way. So we can now click on the switch and it will change from active to inactive and then inactive back to active. And this is a great way to show clients or stakeholders the functionality in action, just so they can get an idea of how it's actually going to work. And there we go, that's how to create a working Switch UI in Adobe XD. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.